So a big influence for me on my faith journey, as I imagine it might be for you, is uh, a grandmother, uh, affectionately known as Nana Scott, was my grandmother. She was from Ireland. She was a great Catholic, really incarnational. Uh, rosary beads in one hand and a whiskey in the other. But Nana Scott used to say some wonderful phrases when I was young. Things like, you should never be off your knees thanking God for everything you've got. Uh, another phrase, uh, all is pure to the pure in heart. And another one, um, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself. I came to realise actually as I grew my faith journey that all these are actually in the scriptures. That we find those kind of messages in the scriptures. So Manan had this internalised in her own life. One of the phrases she said, which has stuck with me to this day, is every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. Every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. And that is what Christian hope is founded on, that we're not just um, a person who kind of gets it wrong all the time, who's weak, who's a failure, who's a mess, but instead that we have this eternal dignity this dignity given by God. In fact, we read this in the scriptures in Luke's gospel, we find that wonderful story of the prodigal son. Now everyone kind of knows the, the kind of theme and the message of the prodigal son, but apparently 2000 years ago when Jesus was telling the story, he changed it because originally, originally it went like this. A man had two sons and the youngest son said to his dad, Dad, if you were dead, I'd have the inheritance and money that would come to me. So I want it now. So the father gave the son his inheritance and he went off and squandered it on a life of debauchery. And then he started to feel the pinch. And he decided, if I go back home, I can ask my dad just to be a servant and have a kind of peaceful, easygoing life going forward. So the son turns round, heads back home, gets to the door, knocks on, and the father appears at the door. The father tells the son to wait. The father goes to the backyard. He fills a bucket full of rubbish, the mess that the pigs were eating. Goes back to the front door, empties it out in front of his son, and he says, this is what you are to me. You're dead, you're finished. So how much changed when Jesus spoke those words, that the father runs out to meet the son, arms wide open, put a cloak on this man, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, because my son was lost and now he's found, he was dead and now he is alive. There's so much rejoicing as Jesus reminds us of a one sinner who repents rather than a thousand righteous people. And that's been the case for me as well, in my own priesthood, in my own coming to faith, that I've realised that I need God's grace, I need his mercy, his forgiveness, I need his arms open wide. And this is a God that we believe in, a God who takes a risk to show us how much he loves us, inviting us to take a risk also, and in an act of faith to love him back. And for the times that we fail, for the times we get it wrong, for the times that we mess up, we have the sacrament of reconciliation, commonly known as confession. Now, I am a bit of a serial confessor. I go to confession once a week or once every two weeks. And I don't go to confession because I think I'm a bad person. I go to confession because I want to be a better person. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. Pope Francis has reminded us that so often we tired of asking God for mercy. We seem to get the things wrong all the time. But the Pope reminds us that God never tires of giving us his mercy. Again, the Pope has encouraged us priests to not make the confessional into a torture chamber. But my experience as a priest who hears confession is that people often come in torturing themselves. And what confession does, what the sacrament does, it unburdens us gives us pardon and peace. St. Padre Pio said, it doesn't matter if a bird is held by a chain or by a thread, it still can't fly. What confession does, it breaks the chains, it cuts the thread, and it lets us have that life in abundance which Jesus promised in John's Gospel. He said, 
I have come that you might have life and life to the fullest. So confession is an invitation to be like the prodigal son, to receive our dignity, our self-worth from God, to be restored to friendship with God, to have the possibility of being the saint that we've been called to be. And that's a great invitation from our late Pope, St. John Paul II, that we would be the saints of the new millennium, that we would have the grace of God in our life and share that love with others. Confession is an invitation, like the prodigal son received, to come home to the very heart of God, God who is love. And here are the questions. 